hello everyone welcome you all for v2 e section so in this lecture i am delivering the content on intents so firstly what is intents so intents are nothing but as i discussed in my previous video intents are nothing but user intentions so what is this user intentions so we can categorize this intents into two categories there are two types of intents there are two types which are those first one is explicit intent explicit intent the second one is implicit intent what is this explicit and implicit means so just simple <coughs> the explicit intent means so if the transition is going to happen within the application between two activities within the application between two activities such intents are called explicit intents so if the transition if you click on some button so if it's going to transit between two application for example so if you are present in whatsapp and if you click on a url it will open an a browser to uh, show that particular news or to show that particular content such kind of intents are called implicit intents so is it clear there are two types of intents first one is explicit intent if the transition is happening within the application for example if you click on back button so if you click on submit button so if you click on next button so it's going to transit to next activity such kind of intents are called explicit intents so if you click on a url so if you click on a, any particular content that is present in whatsapp or facebook it will ask the help of a browser or it will ask the help of a camera application such kind of intents are called implicit intents so before we start with the intents firstly we need to know how to declare the intents so while declaring the intents we are going to follow the same rule how you are going to use uh, uh, the object creation in java programming but we are going to use the term called intent intent followed by the reference you can give any reference is equal to new intent this is how you are going to create an object in java programming language in the similar manner in place of object or the class name you are going to use the intent followed by the reference is equal to new intent so if you are working with the explicit intent means you are going to mention the class name you are going to mention the class name or even you can call it as activity name so if you are working with for example if you are working this kind of intents are called explicit intents explicit so if you are working with the implicit means if you are working with implicit means the syntax will remain the same just in place of class name you are going to mention the action you are going to mention the action this kind of intents are called implicit intents just make it simple before you make use of intents the first thing is you have to declare the intent so using the reference so you if you are making use of explicit intent means you are going to make use of class name as a parameter so if you are making use of implicit intent means in place of class name you are going to mention the action either you use explicit or implicit so there must be another parameter by name start activity start activity so where inside that brace you are going to provide the reference for example so if i declare reference as i so here the reference should be i you have to pass the reference for every individual intent that you have given Okay, that you have given should have a reference that reference should be passed to start that activity is it clear so as i mentioned earlier what is intents intents are nothing but user intentions so there are two types of intents that is implicit that is what's going to happen if you use this implicit means the transition is going to happen within the application so if you are making use of explicit intent means the transition is going to happen between the application for example from whatsapp to camera application from whatsapp to google chrome from facebook to instagram like that if the transition is happening between the application uh, application means implicit intent if the transition happening within the application means explicit intents 
okay the declaration will remain the same how you are going to declare the intent for explicit in the similar manner you are going to declare for the implicit just the only one thing that you are going to change is you in place of class name in place of activity name you are going to mention the action so either you use implicit or you use explicit you must end that intent declaration by using a term start activity by using a method start activity the parameter that you are going to pass for the start activity is the reference that you are going to use while declaring the intents so i will demonstrate how the intents will work with suitable example first i will start with explicit intents just observe my android studio is ready so i am going to create a new project okay by selecting the empty activity okay by selecting the empty activity and the language is java the language that i am going to use here is java i am going to give a name that is intent application my project name is intent application the language is java and the api level is 23 and i will click on finish it will take around 2 minutes to complete the gradle synchronization so have good internet connectivity please make sure that so before you create any particular project you have to make sure that your system is having the internet connection okay then only the then only this particular execution is possible otherwise so it will show error you are going to get error if the if your system is not connected to the internet connectivity so it will take around 2 minutes to complete the gradle synchronization so once after that we can start with the first explicit intents okay so intents are nothing but the user intentions so there are two ways to use the user intentions one is if the transition if the user want to transit within the application between the two activities then we are going to make use of explicit intents if the user want to transit between two applications such as from whatsapp to camera then we are going to make use of implicit intents so in declaration part also we are going to change only one thing in place of representing the class name we are going to represent the action in implicit intents in explicit intents we are going to mention the uh class name so either you use implicit intent or you use the explicit intent that start activity part is mandatory with the reference of intents okay so now my application is ready just if you look at your the gradle synchronization has been finished 1 minute ago okay so now firstly i will add a button here i will go to this is my there are two parts one is java part other one is xml part i will go to xml part so i will go to design so where i have some hello world message i will delete it why because i don't want this so now i'm going to add a button here i'm going to add a button here so and i'm going to set the cursors for this button why because i am using constraint layout here so i need to set the constraints for both top top bottom and left hand right have certain the button here and as i mentioned earlier you can change the button name by clicking on this particular a uh, component you, you can say you can get the attributes here so in this attributes i am going to change the name or text text what's the text we have so if the user clicks on this it will go to second activity so just observe i have renamed the button so now it is showing second okay so if required i can add the text view here to indicate whether it's a first uh, uh activity or second activity uh, as you know that this is my first activity which is created when after creation of my project okay so just i will make the title as first activity i am going to set the cursor and i am going to place it in a proper direction proper part of my application i am going to change the text and i will give the text as first activity this is my first activity and i am going to change the size also and i am going to change the size okay so now just observe my design is ready with respect to first one so now i need to so please observe here as i mentioned earlier once you create a project you will be given with only one java part as well as one xml part this is main activity and miss this is xml part of that one so now so if you want to add another activity for the same application just right click right click new new activity which activity mt activity okay so this activity name i am going to give as second activity 
second activity. This will come under the same application. You have an option to select whether it's a launchable or not. So if you start your execution with the main activity, then there is no need of selecting this one. Or if you want to execute from the second activity also means then you are going to select this one. So choice is yours. So if you select this one means the intent filters will be added in your manifest file. So if you don't select this one means the intent filter filters will be absent in the manifest file. The choice is yours. So I will finish. So now this leads to creation of another activity. Just observe. Now I have two XML files. One is the main activity XML file. Okay. Other one is the second activity which I have created right now. I have two Java parts. One is main activity Java part. Other one is second activity Java part. As of now in my single application by name intent application. I have two Java files and two XML files. So now I will go to design part here. I will go to design part of the second file which I have created. It's an empty one. Firstly, I will add the text view. Firstly, I will add the text view and I will give the title. Firstly, I will add the text view and I will give the title. I will set the constraints. I'm going to set the constraints. Okay. Set the constraint towards the top, bottom, left and right and place it wherever it is required and change the text. What's the text I have here? Text view. I'm going to change it to second activity. Why? Because this the name of this activity is second activity and I'm going to change the size also. I will increase the font size. Why? Because it is not visible. Okay. So now my second activity is ready and I'm going to add a button here. I'm going to add a button and I'm going to set the cursors. So whenever the user clicks on this button, so it should go back to the first activity. So I will change the name. That is nothing but text. I will make it as first. If the user clicks on this button, it should take to the first activity. Just observe my design is ready. This is my second activity design, which I have created right now. So the title is second activity. If the user clicks on this button, it will go to the first activity. So similarly in my main, in the first activity, I have the title first activity. If the user clicks on this button, it will go back to the, it will take you to the second activity. Just I'm showing how the transition is going to happen within the application. This is one good example for the explicit index. So now I need to add the code part. So now I need to add the code part. So just observe here. So what's the code part I'm going to add here. So just, this is my first activity, right? So this is my first activity. So I'm going to add the code part public void. So if you, if you click on this, so it's going to take to the second, right? So I'm going to write a method called second. So you can give any particular name. So I'm going to provide the view. Okay. I'm going to provide the view. So it will ask. Uh, okay. I'm going to provide the view. So first I'm going to declare here. So how am I going to declare the intent as I mentioned earlier? Intent. Intent. Reference is high is equal to new intent. Okay. So I need to con get the context of this application so that I will make use of get application context. Okay, get application context followed by you need to provide the name of the second activity. What's the name of the second activity? Whenever the user clicks on this button, it should take to the second activity, right? So just observe second activity dot class. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, so this is my intent definition. So just please observe how we are going to declare the object in the Java, in the similar manner, I'm creating the intent here. Intent, the reference is I is equal to new intent. The context is this particular application. That's why I'm using get application context. So whenever the user clicks on this, it should take to the second activity. Okay. So after this, you have to place another one statement. That is, you're going to use a uh, method called start activity. Inside the start activity, the parameter is the reference of intent. What's the reference here? I have used here. The references I that should be passed. That should be passed. Is it clear? So now I have placed this particular method inside the 
main activity it's nothing but the first activity which we have created while creating our project similarly i'm going to place the same code i'm going to place the same code in the second activity second activity the name that i'm going to give here is first whenever the user clicks on this it should take to the first activity right first activity is nothing but the main activity the main activity main activity dot class okay just observe we are done with the creation of two activities here we are done with the creation of intents for the two activities just observe in the first activity i have created the method by name so so in previous lecture uh, i have explained how to directly use the method or indirectly so this kind of declaring direct method is called as an indirect one why because so you are not going to use any action listeners directly here so in place of that you are going to write the user defined method directly so this will be placed inside the button this will be placed inside the button of that particular xml file so in the first activity i am going to create a method i have created a method by name second where i have performed the intent declaration so intent declaration the parameter that i am passing here is second activity dot class whenever the user clicks on this button which is placed in the main activity so it is going to transit to the second activity similarly i have used the same method in the second activity where i have declared the intent okay whenever the user clicks on this particular button present in the second activity it will take you to the main activity it's nothing but the first one so those thing i am going to add inside the button so as i mentioned earlier so if you click if you click on this first activity button it should take to the second one right second activity right so please observe i will go to code part so this is my button i will make a one space here and i will add a function by name i will add a parameter by name on click so if the user clicks on the button present in the first activity that should take to the second i will add this method similarly i will go to the xml part of second activity i will go to the code part and i am going to add inside this button so just search for the button tag so inside this button i am going to make a space and i am going to add a on click so whenever the user clicks on this particular button it should take to the first activity is it clear just a simple thing this is the simple demonstration of explicit activity so just i'm going to brush up the procedure that we have followed right now firstly i have created a project in that project this main activity and the activity underscore main xml file which are automatically created so firstly i'm going to have designed this just by adding a title called first activity and adding a button and have renamed this button second as a second okay then i have created another one activity by selecting by clicking on this java part right click new activity and i have selected the empty activity and i have given the name and i have given the name as second activity so in the second activity i have gone for i have went for the design part in the design part i have given the title second activity and i have added a button first okay so next going to the implementation logic part inside the first activity i have declared a method by name second so where inside that i have declared the intent so what's that intention whenever the user clicks on the that particular button it should transit to the second activity so that activity has been started so similarly i have uh, in the second activity java file i have declared the intent whenever the user clicks on this intent it should take to the it should take back to the first activity and i have started this activity the method name is first okay so finally after doing after uh, writing this code in the design part especially in the code part in that particular button i have added those two methods by using on click parameter so please observe here in the second xml i have added on click whenever the user clicks on this button it should execute the method by name first similarly in the first xml file whenever the user clicks on the button it should execute the second the method that is written in the uh, main activity by name second so just observe i will execute this it will take around 2 minutes to execute so the gradle is building so you have to wait until the avd android virtual device 
uh, will come to online once it comes to the online you can see the output so please observe remember one thing you have to make sure before you execute any particular project you have to make sure that you have device here so if the device is not available go to android avd manager so that you can see here itself and you can download the device so please observe so my device is ready so it is waiting to install the application so once it in installs the application it will start from the first activity so it is waiting installation is happening so please observe now we are present in first activity so as per my requirement if i click on this particular button it should take me to the second activity this kind of intents are called explicit intents just observe i will click on this so i am present at second activity so if i click once again this particular button it should take back to the first activity just observe so once again i am present at the first activity so this kind of intents are called explicit intents so as you can observe here the transition is happening within the intent application whenever the user clicks on first button it will take you to the first activity whenever the user clicks on the second button it will take you to the second activity this kind of transition is called explicit intents okay so next as i mentioned earlier so now i will demonstrate the implicit intents it's a simple example just please observe your whatever we have used here with respect to explicit intents in place of uh, class or the in place of activity name you are going to mention the action in place of activity name you are going to mention the action that is required so for this we don't want more than for this we don't want more than uh, hmm, one uh, activity why because uh, it, uh, one activity is more than enough for this execution so please observe we have two activities which we have created here so just i will close the first one second activity which is not required here okay and i will close the corresponding xml file so now i have only one activity present here that is the name of that activity is uh, even you can delete it if, if, if it's not required you can delete this one and it will just it will ask for the refactor okay you can delete this one so just it will ask for the refactor okay that's it okay so now please observe so this is how initially when i created the explicit intent the code was okay so please observe here so i will go to design part so i will demonstrate how the explicit intents can be used so just i will change the title in place of text i will change this as vtu mysore i will add the text vtu mysore okay so next i will assign the button i will adjust the button so if required you can duplicate the buttons or you can add the new buttons here why because i need more than uh, i need a uh, more than three buttons i need around four buttons for this particular explicit intents execution so i will set this button here okay so next i will add another one button and i will set the cursors i will set the cursors and i will arrange properly as per my requirement okay so next once again i will add another one button so i need four buttons for this particular exercise so just the thing that you are going to change here is just the thing that you are going to change here is just you are going to add uh, action in place of the intent uh, uh, activity name that we have used just you are going to mention the action that's it there is nothing new that you are going to do here just you are going to mention the action that's it okay so please observe i have four buttons i have given the title vtu mysuru first button so i will give the first button as 
text about okay about so next the second button i will going to i'm going to rename it as results so third button i'm going to rename it as call fourth button i'm going to rename it as map So call. Is it yeah? So just a simple example to demonstrate the explicit intents. So just I'm going to rename it as in place of VTU. I will use VVC my so why because I have the details of VVC. Or even even you can use VTU itself. VTU my so I can get the details of those we uh, required details from the VTU website itself. So please observe this is my design to demonstrate the. implicit intent so title is vtu mysuru if the user clicks on this button it should show about the vtu so if the user clicks on results it should show the results website of vtu if the user clicks on map if the user clicks on map it should show the location of vtu mysuru if the user clicks on call it should open the calling option okay so just observe why because we are we are going to use the browsers as well as google maps as well as call application so this will simply demonstrate how the implicit intents can be used in the same activity just observe i will go to activity so firstly so firstly please observe so firstly i will open the vtu website here vtu.ac.in okay vtu.ac.in so please observe this website address i am going to pass here so firstly i am going to write a method by name public just i will zoom public void about this function is responsible for about so we need to provide the view okay firstly i will get the url with respect to uh, the vtu website string url what's the vtu url i guess you all know the url of vtu that is vtu.ac.in correct me if i'm wrong this is the website address that we are going to use to visit the vtu website to know about the vtu so next please observe it's not possible to use directly the url so you have to convert this url to url uniform resource identifier uri means uniform resource identifier i will give the reference the reference for uri is u so as we are dealing with the website web uh, the details from the website so we need to use the protocol http hypertext transfer protocol okay so uri dot parse uri dot parse the protocol that we are going to use is http okay http so and we are going to embed along with s http the url that we have stored as a string that is nothing but plus url okay so this is the preliminary thing that you have to do firstly you have to get the url about where the about information is present next you have to convert it into uri by embedding the protocol that we are going to use for the web 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 content we are going to use the protocol http so that will be embedded along with the url so next once you are done with that so now we you need to call the intent intent the reference is i is equal to new intent the action that we can perform with respect to this web content is the maximum of the option the, the only one action that you can pro, uh, perform on this is view so that action that i am going to provide here intent dot action view so in place of class name that you have represented that you have passed in the explicit intents in this implicit intents you are going to provide the action so what's the action that we can perform on the web content it's nothing but action view and finally i'm going to start the activity uh, activity start activity the reference is i the intent what's the reference that i have used for the intent that is nothing but i so we are done with the coding of about 
So similarly, next I will go with the result website. I guess you all know the result website the where we are going to see the result video results, public void results. Okay, once again, you need to provide the view. So firstly, I will store it as a string, string, the references, URL. What's the URL that we are going to use? Results.vtu.ac.n. So this URL should be converted to uniform research identifier. That is URI is equal to URI dot parse parse. So once again, the result is also a web content. So we need a protocol HTTP, same procedure will be followed. So plus you are going to embed the URL. So now we are done with the prerequisite that such as so we are done with identifying the URL that is responsible for the result. And we have converted that into URI. So once after that, I need to start the intent, I need to declare it first intent i is equal to new intent. Okay, so the action that you can perform on v2 result is just you can see the result. If you have failed, you can apply for the same subject in next semester. That's the only action that you can do that is action view. Okay, then start activity. So please remember either you are working with the implicit intent or explicit intent. This line is mandatory. You have to start the activity by using the reference that you have used in the intent. The reference I'm using here is I am passing the same here. And please remember if you are working with the explicit intent means so in place of action, you are going to provide the class name. So here I will provide the action. So even we are done with the results. So the next thing is, so the next thing is location. It's nothing but maps. Location, it's nothing but maps. Public, I'm going to write another method, public void map. Okay, so for this also you have to provide the view. Okay, firstly I will store the location in the form of string. So please observe string loc is equal to wish wish paraya instead of that i will give vtu regional center mysore vtu regional center mysore okay so in place of giving the belagama uh, address i'm uh, giving the location as vtu regional center mysore so now once again, so directly string cannot be used as a parameter. So you have to convert that into URI. So by you calling the URI dot parse. So please remember one thing. So in play, whenever you are going to view the web content, you have to use the protocol HTTP. Similarly, whenever you are going to view the maps, Google Maps related content, you have to use the protocol Geo. And please observe, so we are going to use the query. We are going to provide this VTU regional center Mysuru as a query. That's why I'm using the question mark followed by Q is equal to followed by what we have stored in the location. So in location I have stored VTU regional center. Okay. That has been concatenated with the protocol geo as we are performing the query. So I'm using this question mark Q is equal to. So we are done with the prerequisites which are required to call the Google Maps. So next I need to declare the intent. So intent i is equal to new intent. So once again on the Google Google Maps, what's the action that you can perform? It's nothing but intent dot action view. So please observe your so in place of action view, we have lot of options here. Just it's left to you what you're going to use. Just observe action view, action insert, action dial, action send to likewise. We have lot of actions, but here with respect to the example that I'm taking here. So we are going to perform only view. We are going to view the location of VTU region center Mysuru. That's why I'm using the action, action view. And I'm going to call the st start activity for that intent reference. So we are done with the map also. So finally, we are left out with the last one feature that is nothing but calling feature. 
public void I'm going to write a method for that one also public void call and I'm going to provide the view okay so firstly I need to store the number firstly I need to store the number so please observe I don't know the VTU number in place of that I'm going to give my own number public uh, I'm going to use that as num is equal to I'm going to give my number 8050462525 this is my number okay so next I need to convert this to once again it's not possible to directly use that string I need to convert it into URI so please observe whenever you're going to use the calling option so in place of for web content we are going to use the protocol HTTP for maps Google Maps we are going to use the protocol Geo similarly whenever you're going to use the call so we are going to use the protocol by name tell whenever you're going to use the calling option you're going to use the protocol tell so you're going to embed that number with this protocol so we are done with the prerequisites that are required for the calling option that are required to make use of that calling option feature enable in my application so now I need to call the intent intent I is equal to new intent the action that I'm going to perform here is I'm not going to perform the call up action why because so even you have that action here if required I can show this action call it is available but the thing I'm going to use action view itself why because I'm going to work with the virtual device right I'm not using any uh, real um, phone to see my output R I am not using any uh, I have not connected any real virtual machine, virtual real phone to this Android studio as I'm working with the virtual device I'm going to view only that calling option that's it I'm not going to perform any call okay so I'm going to start this activity but the by reference providing the reference just observe so if you look at this four methods which I have which I mentioned so all will look the same just with respect to the first one with respect to the about just we are going to use the web content of VTU website to display the about information second in results just we are going to make use of VTU website results website to display the results to see the result just next with respect to maps I'm going to make use of Google Maps by using the geo protocol okay to see the location of VTU regional center Mysuru next I'm going to pro uh, uh, next method is call where I'm going to provide my uh, mobile number so where the protocol that I'm going to use here is tell whenever the user clicks on this button so that particular number, number will appear in the dialog box call dialog so just observe I'm done with the methods so now you need to add these methods to this particular buttons right so how you're going to add by using the on click so this is my design part go to the code part of the design so please observe the first button is about the first button just observe here you can see the uh, text what's the text we have here with respect to this button about the method I need to place for this particular button is on click the method is about should be placed whenever the user clicks on this button this about method will be triggered okay similarly I will go to the next the button here present is results I will make use of on click so I will use the method results whenever the user clicks on this button so it will trigger the method results so next I will go to next button the button we have here is map the button we have here is map whenever the user clicks on on click the map method should trigger so whenever the user clicks on this button the map method will be triggered which we have written in the Java part so the last one so the button name is call so I will make new space I will add on click so I will add on click on click whenever the user clicks on this button the call method should be triggered the button name is call whenever the user clicks on this button the calling option should be triggered so I am done with my design as well as java part just observe so simply i'm going to create a new project inside that i will get the main activity as well as its design part firstly i'm going to design in design part i'm going to add a title the title is vtu mysuru next i'm going to add four buttons the button names are about 
result, map, and call. So once after adding these four buttons and renaming these four buttons, I will go to Java part. Inside the Java part, firstly, I will write the method for about, where I'm using the content of VTU website. So the action that I'm performing is view and the protocol that I'm using here is HTTP. So next, I'm going to write a method for results where I'm using the results website of VTU. The protocol that I'm using is HTTP. The action that I'm performing here is view. So next, so and next, I'm going to write a method called map where I'm going to give the input as VTU region center Mysuru. The protocol that I'm using here is geo. The action that I'm performing here is view. So next, I'm going to write a method called call. So I'm going to give my phone number as an input. So the protocol that I'm using here is tell as because I'm, we are working with the telephone services. So the action that I'm performing here is view. So just observe once after writing these methods. So I will go to the code part of the design. So inside every individual button, I will make use of those methods by using on click. So inside the call button, I'm placing the call method by using on click. Inside the map button, I'm mapping, I'm uh, using the map method by using the on click. Inside the inside the uh, about button, I'm making use of on click and I'm placing the about method. So now I will show the execution. Please observe, I will execute this. So this demonstrate the simple, this is a simple demonstration of uh, implicit intents where we are making use of other applications. So previously, what's the demo? The demo that I've shown is with respect to explicit intents where the transition is happening between the activities of the same application. You are transiting from first activity to second activity. Just observe my output is ready. My system is ready. Just observe. This is what VTU Mysuru. So there are four buttons about results and map and call. So as I mentioned earlier in the previous example, that is explicit intents where we had two activities first and second activity where the transition is happening only between those two activities. So with respect to this example, if I click on this about, so it will take the help of browser and it will show the display. Uh, so just observe. So it will take the help of Google and it will display the information about the VTU. So just observe, I will execute it once again. This asking to open the things with. So I will open the map. It is asking to open with the Google Maps. I've selected it. So it is asking me to, I will skip this section, this part. So it should show the information about VTO regional center. Why? Because that's the input which I have provided. So this is how it works. So it has opened the Google website, Google Maps. And please observe. I will go back to once again. And I will click on this call. Phoning service. So it is asking me to add the Google account. I, I don't want to add any Google account for this one. Why? Because uh, it's a virtual device. So I will execute this once again. So you can see the output. So whenever you click on the button, it will ask the help of another application to complete the execution. This kind of intents are called. So please observe whenever you get this kind of problem. So go to AVD manager 
and clear the data why because uh, uh, there might be some uh, restrictions said uh, with respect to the memory usage so I will close this emulator and I will go to AVD manager and you can wipe the data present here wipe data or you can use the another any particular emulator I have another one device I will click on it so it will take another uh, two minutes to execute so just observe before that I will brief out so as I mentioned earlier intents are nothing but user intentions there are two types of intents so one is explicit intent other one is implicit intents explicit intents means if the tra transition is happening within the application means between two activities if the transition happening means such intents are called explicit intents if the transition is happening between two different applications means such intents are called implicit intents so how to declare the intent it is somewhat similar to the declaration how you are going to declare the object in the class just simple intent followed by the reference is equal to new intent so in explicit intent you are going to provide the class theme in implicit intent you are provide you will provide the action so either you use explicit intents or you use the implicit intents finally you are going to you should start the activity for that intent so please observe so my target device is ready so it will come to online in two minutes waiting for target device to come online so this simple example this simple demonstration shows how the intents can be used uh, in your application if you are making use of intents to transit uh, within the activity between two activities means then we are going to make use of explicit intents so if you want to transit between the two application means then you are going to make use of implicit intents So whenever you are going to work with this Android Studio with uh, 8 GB RAM, this kind of problems you are going to face. Why? Because uh, uh, the virtual device that I am creating right now, the mobile smartphone, that itself will occupy around uh, uh, 3 GB RAM. So to run the Android Studio, I need 3 GB. For the virtual device creation, I need 3 GB. So if you are working with the 8 GB RAM, so in some way it will lead to... Uh, this kind of problems while seeing the output so just observe my application is ready so if I click on this about uh, it will ask whether you wish to open with there is some internet connectivity problem you wish to open with which application so if you click on map so it will ask you to open with the which application if you click on if you have to select you have to complete it so I will click on Google Maps so if you click on this Google Map so this particular what you have input provided so this will be passed as an input for this Google Maps so to complete this action So this is how you can use the implicit as well as explicit intents in your mobiles, mobile applications. So implicit, finally I'm going to make it simple. The implicit intent means, so if the you are, if you click on any particular button, if it asks the permission like this, if you, if it, if it requests to open that particular, if you want, if it requests to complete the action by doing like this, then such kind of intents are called as an implicit intents. So whenever you click on the button, it will try to take you to the next activity. Such kind of intents are called explicit intents. Okay. This completes uh, the lecture on intents. Thank you one and all.